What's the connection, you might ask, between Victoria's hotel quarantine disaster and the lurid tales now unfolding in hearings this week at the state's powerful anti-corruption commission, with claims of brown paper bags of cash handed to senior public sector managers, the sort of you scratch my break, I'll scratch yours, the kickbacks and so much more, all to secure lucrative taxpayer contracts? Well, we'll see, won't we? But it's a matter of public record that Unified Security, the outfit that got the $30 million job to run hotel quarantine in just about six hours flat, is also a provider to the transport operator Metro Trains, now under investigation for corrupt conduct. Now, I'm not saying there's a link between the same security company, Unified Security, being involved in rail contracts and hotel quarantine contracts. But what I am saying is that in both of these areas where Unified is involved, well, the probity of contracts is under scrutiny. Now, it might be early days in what we know about this anti-corruption investigation, but the work of Viaback behind the scenes has been four-plus years in the making. And even at this early stage, what IBAC is telling Victorians and Australians, well, it's extraordinary. What we're hearing out of the phone intercepts, honestly, beggars belief. You and I will milk this as long as we can, yeah? Hmm. We have been hand-feeding him everything. For the last four or five years, everything he's got is been delivered it on a plate. Now, that's the now suspended Victorian rail boss, Ivac has been told, who operated a burner phone exclusively for dealings with the head of a cleaning company with which V-Line had a multi-million dollar contract. His name is James Pinder, suspended in August as the head of Victoria's regional train and bus network. Pinder said the money was for a gambling syndicate he and the other person were in, and he admits to borrowing some $350,000 from trans-clean executives. He's the suspended boss of Victoria's V-Line again. Realistically, you shouldn't go in home. Tell him what's this. 50 each. Oh. All right, we're not greedy. Really he always calls it a sprinkle, doesn't he? Yeah, yeah, no, no. no, no, no. 50, 50 is good. What's the sprinkle? The silence wore thin for the Commissioner. Well, seriously, I, I, I can't sit through this. Now, beyond these audio recordings, there was also video surveillance footage of the V-Line boss dressed in a face mask receiving $10,000 in cash from the hooded trans-clean boss. Supposedly, we're told these were gambling winnings, despite other evidence of V-Line executives discussing how they could shake down the cleaning contractor for more payoffs, given the contract had increased during the COVID pandemic. And more. A note from Pinder, again the V-Line boss, to the cleaning contractor saying, and I quote, they'll look at the procurement processes and find nothing. They'll try and follow the dollars from you to us. This may not end well. Prepare for the worst. We need to stick together. Now, honestly, it sounds like something from a 1930s mobster movie. This is happening right now here in Victoria. Is it any wonder that IBAC, Victoria's anti-corruption commission for the past five years, has had a document on its website warning public sector agencies for public servants, warning them about the sort of corruption they need to be alive to, to the rules of procurement that must be followed, what to watch out for, the red flags, if you like, that should alert them to trouble. It's all about helping public servants to look out for and understand the red flags of corruption when it comes to procurement or the use of government contracts and, of course, the spending of your money. IBAC warns that, and I quote, procurement is vulnerable to being corrupted because it can involve large sums of public money and be impacted by highly devolved decision-making, limited oversight and inadequate staff training. The red flags are all about spotting and mitigating risk. It's all common sense stuff. I'll quote some more. Don't circumvent competitive procurement, it says. Don't favour getting procurement done quickly over following proper process. And don't neglect appropriate paperwork, including documentation of decisions. Public sector managers are advised to conduct due diligence to establish the legitimacy of suppliers. 
It says to raise purchase orders before procurement occurs and to check the quality of services. Now let's turn back to Victoria's catastrophic hotel quarantine program and to the Coat Inquiry, who in the Andrews government is looking at the decision, that fateful decision that's Coates carefully considering who made it, who made that decision to go alone and use private security, a decision we now know calls Victoria's devastating second wave. Remember what I've said already about procurement, about government contracts and the risk of corruption. The warnings of IBAC. Well, remarkably, Victoria's jobs department, run by the Minister Martin Bakula, was and still is the only major government department in the state that has not made its procurement compliant with new probity processes that were supposed to be put back in place 18 months ago. Yet this is the very department that the Premier and his now former departmental chief, Chris Eccles, put in charge of running all of Victoria's multi-million dollar COVID contracts. And this was the department, the jobs department, that concluded with just a few emails and a couple of phone calls what was to become a $30 million contract with Unified Security in just six hours flat on that Saturday morning back in March that put in train the terrible events of the past seven months. A $30 million deal with a provider, Unified Security, that was not on the preferred list, that was run by someone with a history of failed businesses and multi-million dollar debts. Now, without a doubt, talk about IBAX warnings, this was a deal that raised all of those anti-corruption commission red flags. All of them. Equally remarkably, we know that in early March, the Victorian government's purchasing board, and this is an independent procurement watchdog, we know it warned all Victorian government departments about, quote, the increased risk of unscrupulous and ill-prepared suppliers during the present crisis and advised them all to be vigilant. We know from material provided to the Coat Inquiry that staff within the Jobs Department were concerned about the rushed weekend deal back on March 28 to give Unified Security this $30 million deal for three months' work. There's an email, for instance, from one of the department's procurement specialists on the following Tuesday saying, and I quote, I understand there was an urgency to get things done quickly over the weekend, but to have a non-approved firm providing security and effectively enforcing government quarantine regulation off the back of some emails and phone calls presents significant risk. Now, talk about red flags. You'd think that email might have raised a red flag with Jennifer Coate, wouldn't you? Yet, in my view, the inquiry has failed to adequately grill Jobs Department head Simon Femister on the contract he signed with Unified Security. Indeed, Jennifer Coate has failed to date to even call the head, the owner of Unified Security, who negotiated this $30 million contract. Now, both the Minister, Martin Pakula, and the departmental head, Femister, gave evidence to an earlier parliamentary inquiry into the same fiasco that differed quite significantly from evidence they later gave to the Coate inquiry about how this contract was awarded, who got the money, and even how much was paid. Now, how can the coat inquiry be taken seriously when such an obviously suspect contract has been left almost entirely unprobed, especially given the object lesson now taking place next door on contracts in IBAC? 